Hey everyone, it's good to be with you today as always as we gather together to grow in the Lord. Today we're going to talk about contending for the things of God. And you know, I love that Psalm, it's actually in Psalm 34 verse 14. It says, search for peace and work to maintain it. Search for peace and work to maintain it. So how do we search for peace and what goes into working to maintain it? How does this go with contending for the things of God? You know, sometimes when we're contending for the things of God, there can be a feeling of restlessness or like everything's not going quite right. But if we if we are told to search for peace and to work to maintain it, then there's a reason for that. And that also comes into play when we're contending because honestly, here's a thought, as the kingdom of God, as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, Christ, we have to learn to contend from a place of peace. And that seems to be counterintuitive. And yet we can search for peace. We can work to maintain it. We we belong to a kingdom that, that takes the world by force and violence, but is also full of peace and the love of God and the nature of God. And so remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We have m- many different weapons that we use, and they're weapons of the kingdom of heaven, not of, of the earth, and not how we understand understand them as as mankind. And so how do we contend for the things of God with power, with authority, with passion, with peace, all rolled into one as we go for all he has? So as I was thinking about this, I actually went into Matthew 13 and I was looking at the parables. And so Matthew 13, 44 is the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, and just say in his excitement, in his excitement, he hid it again and he sold everything that he owned to get enough money to go and buy that field. Okay, so again, it's it, it's like a treasure, okay? Think of going down a treasure hunt and how much excitement there is with that. So it's like a treasure. And, you know, are we still excited? Are you still excited? Am I still excited about the kingdom of heaven and the things of God? That's really an important question, more important than we realize because we not only guard the peace and we work to maintain it, we also look for this treasure. And we need to be excited about the things of heaven and excited about the things of God. If we go on in Matthew, we have the parable of the pearl, another really, really well-known story that the Lord gives us. Another, you know, a parable is a story to make a point. And so in verse 45, he says again, so he's telling the same concept. He's he's weaving these together. He's marrying these concepts. And he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for the choice pearls. When he discovers a pearl of great price, value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Notice the word lookout. He's on the lookout. There's an intentionality there. He's looking for that pearl. Okay, it's not it's not just gazing over the countryside. It's an intentional looking with an expectation to find. And that's really important. You could say to my, yourself right now, I need to look or say it out loud. I need to look with the expectation to find. I need to look into the kingdom of God, into the things of heaven with an expectation that I will find what I'm looking for. And so as I look around at the body of Christ, it seems like many have lost their excitement for the things of God, for the signs, for the wonders, for the miracles, for salvation, for provision, you know, for the kingdom of heaven to manifest on this earth. It's like so much has come up against us that we've just kind of sat back and we've lost that enthusiasm. We've lost that excitement. We've lost that intentionality. And so, when I when I look at these parables and I look at the excitement and the intentionality and the positioning, I see that weariness isn't allowed to to enter in. That that there's there's an expectancy and there's a focus and there's a determination and and you know there's I'm I'm going to find this and I'm going to cling to it and I'm going to own it because of who my God is. I mean that's basically what's behind the story. Now in the first parable the treasure in the field. He hid it until he had enough money to purchase the field. So with the, right there, I see a guarding of what we've been given and what we found. So the question is, how do I guard what God's given me so that it's not stolen away? Proverbs 50 or 25, 2 says, it is God's privilege co- to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. Let me read that again. It is God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. 
First Peter 2 9 calls us a royal priesthood. And a lot of a lot of the body of Christ is is really uncomfortable with that term. We want to put that on the pastors and the priests, and a lot of that comes from you know the the Catholicism background. Okay, but but we are all called priests. And actually, um, in Revelation 1 6, the King James version actually states that he's made us kings and priests to God. And that makes us even more uncomfortable. Okay, kings and priests to God. So here's what we need to grasp. We need to grasp that God has invited us into a journey. He's invited you into a journey. He's invited me into a journey to discover the greatness that there is in him. And it begins, of course, with that search for salvation. And when we talk about these two parables right here in Matthew 13, 44 and 45, where we're talking about the, you know, the treasure in the field and we're talking about the pearl of great price, we often as pastors, we take that back to salvation. And that is such a precious, precious gem. That's where it all starts. But I want to suggest that there's more to that, that we don't stop at the moment that we get saved, that we keep searching and we keep looking and we keep that excitement and we keep digging things up because, again, it's God's privilege to conceal things and the king's privilege to discover them. So it's our privilege to discover the things of God. Okay, and he has not concealed them so we can never see them. It's an invitation to go and dig deeper and to search and have intentionality and to have that excitement. So, again, you know, Somebody once said that window shopping is not the same thing as buying. Okay, just stopping at salvation is not the same thing as becoming a follower, diving into the things of God and growing with him and going from only drinking milk to eating the meat of the word of God. We can't settle for window shopping when God has called us in to experience the fullness of all he's had. What I'm saying is that I believe that these parables refer to so much more than just what's on the surface. And we have to literally dig deeper with an intentionality, with a focus, with an excitement, discover more of the things of God. You know, one of the people in scripture who's captured my imagination so often is Joshua. Remember, for quite a season, he was basically Moses' assistant, okay? He and Moses would go to the tent to meet with God. And we know that at that point in time in that tent, that Moses and God met, talked face to face, okay, as a man talks to his friend. We don't know what Joshua was doing. Was he just observing? Was he hearing all this? Was he right outside the tent? We don't know. The only th point it tells us there is that God and Moses talked as, as friends face to face. But what's interesting is in Exodus 33, 11, it, would, it goes on and it says, when Moses returned to the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man would not depart from the tent. Hear that. It's not like Moses said, you stay here. Joshua actually would not leave. And how often do we leave the presence of God when we're supposed to be like Joshua, staying and contending and soaking and taking it in and having, I'm going to assume that he was having conversations with God, even though scripture doesn't tell us that. If he, there was a desire within him to stay, we can be assured that there was more going on in that moment than what scripture is telling us, okay? There was more. Think of what happens when we truly enter into the presence of God. So he wouldn't leave, and the question is why. Um, again, he would not leave. Scripture doesn't tell us, but it's possible. Let me just present, let me suggest that maybe Joshua had found something of great value, like that pearl or like the treasure buried in the soil. Could it be possible that that relationship with God, all God was sowing within him, all that was marinating, all that was being seeded, all that was beginning to happen was happening there that would come into play later on because he valued that relationship with God. He had found that pearl of great price. Was it possible that God was building a dream within him, that dream of the promised land within Joshua? You see, if we want to unearth the treasure that's buried in the field, if we truly, truly want to find the pearl of great price, then we have to be willing to stay and we have to be willing to, to dig deeper. We have to have a certain stick-to-itiveness. 
We have to have that excitement that there is something here. There is a treasure to be found. There is something that we haven't discovered yet. There is more to the kingdom of God than what we know in this moment. And are we going to stay on that quest? Are we going to be determined? Are we going to keep sifting through? You know, I think of the gold miners with their pans panning for gold and how it would take that, that they'd be intentionally, intently looking into that sieve, looking for that little nugget of gold, whether it be small or whether it be to be big. They didn't want to miss anything. And yet it took time and it took consistency and it took patience and it took getting dirty and it took getting wet. But yet the reward in the end was so great. Do we have that type of intensity and that type of passion that we won't leave the tent of meeting, even when somebody else leaves, that we can't be pulled away from the presence of God because there's something there that we're searching for. There's something that we want to get into. Life with the Lord cannot become mediocre and it cannot become stagnant. And we can't leave God's presence prematurely. We have to grab on and dig for the fullness of all that he has. So some questions just to just to actually take before the Lord and to, to discover with him. You know, um, am I spending so much time in his presence and am I spending so much time in the tent of meeting that I actually refuse to leave? Like Joshua, you know, Joshua didn't push for leadership. At the point he was hanging out in the tent of meeting, he was Moses' servant. And yet Moses left and he didn't trot right along behind him. He stayed to marinate with the Lord, whatever was going on there. Is it possible that as he stayed there, God was actually working within him all that he needed to be promoted into leadership later on? Some of us are taking a back seat right now. You cannot resent that back seat because you never know what God's doing. It. You support your leaders. We, we, we speak into them. We encourage them. We lift them up. And sometimes when they go out to minister, we stay behind in the tent of meeting because God's doing something. He's working something within us. Like Joshua, we have to become focused, we have to become strong, we have to become determined, and that's who he was. Think about when they went in to spy out the land, and here he is, he and Caleb are the only ones who come back with the truth. They saw the, the, they saw the giants, they saw the land, but from God's perspective, they saw the provision in the land, they saw the promises of God, and he became so strong and determined that nothing could sway him from that. Even when the other 10, the majority, were giving a bad report, both Joshua and Caleb stayed focused on the word of God and the truth of God, and they were willing to go against the majority. They could not be swayed by peer pressure. They would not give up the dreams of God. They would not give up the treasure that God given them. They knew that there was a precious treasure, that there was a pearl, a great price, and they were both going to stay focused. And even through all those years of wandering in the desert, because of the disbelief of the people of God, they stayed focused. Joshua stayed determined and focused. And because of this, he was the one who led the people into the promised land. Because he stayed determined, focused. Are we staying? Do we have staying power into the plans and the purposes of God? Are we contending for the things of God? Are we doing battle God's way? Are we understanding that our weapons are not um, are not of the world, that there is, there's a spiritual component? Are we understanding that the battle's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers? Can we contend even when we differ with somebody? Can we have that focus that stays unrelented and passionately on the word of God that will not veer? Can we have that determination to stay rooted and established in what God has said, what he has decreed and declared, and to partner with it and contend for it in ways that the the world does not understand. You see, Joshua kept the dream alive again. Even he remembered what he'd seen in the tent of meeting. He remembered what he did and experienced. That gave him fuel as he wandered through the desert as he, due to the people's disobedience. He never, ever, ever lost this focus. He never lost sight of God's plan. As a body of Christ, it is essential that we do not lose sight of the plan of God. And that can be something that you can decree and declare and, and, and remind yourself over and over. I cannot, I will not lose sight of the plan of God over my life, over my family, over my nation, over this world. I will not lose sight. I will contend for the fullness of the promises of God. I will contend for that pearl of great price 
I'm not going to stop for the, at the little one. I'm going to keep going for all of it. When I find that treasure in the field, you know, they hid treasure in the field to keep it safe from raiders. What's the treasure that you've hidden in your field to keep it safe from the demonic attack? What do you need to be searching out or adding to as God reveals more and more? What are you doing with that treasure that he's given you? How are you contending for it? How are you making sure that you stay the course? How am I making sure that I stay the course? You see, am I spending time? Are you spending time in that tent of meeting? Are you spending time in the presence of God refusing to leave? Because that position, that time, it changes everything. That position opens up doors that we could never, ever, ever imagine. That position, I am sure, when Joshua was there and he, he stayed in the tent of meeting, he stayed with God. Like I said, scripture doesn't tell us at that point God was talking to him. I like to think he was. I imagine he was. But we don't know for sure that God was talking to Joshua until later. But what we know is God's presence was there. There was something there that had Joshua glued to that space. He could not be removed from it. And that, again, that position, that staying power with the word of God, the promises of God, the fullness of God, getting to know God, the intimacy with God, being disciplined, being in his word and worshiping, all this gives us staying power so that we can contend for the things of God. Are you contending for the things of God? Are you fighting the battles? Are you taking a stance? Are you standing strong on the word of God, even when the world, even when the culture, even with your friends, even with some of your families going against you? Are you so firm? firmly rooted and established, spending time with God, that you're able to contend for the things of God. This greatly concerns me because in so many ways, I don't see the body of Christ contending for the word of God, for the goodness of God, for the promises of God, for the nature of God, for the kingdom of heaven to come on earth. It's more like we sit back and we're content to watch for a dis from a distance like the rest of the camp did. It's only Joshua who went into the tent of meeting. Everyone else became afraid of God's presence. They would even ask Moses to cover his face because it would shine with the glory of God. And yet the question is, are we part of the crowd or are we in the tent of meeting? Are we watching from a distance or are we with God? Are we speaking out of the fear of man and out of the fear of the natural? Are we speaking out of the kingdom of heaven and the glory of God and the fullness of God and the righteousness of God and who he has created us to be? What's our stance? What position are we taking? How are we contending for the things of God or have we given up? And if you've given up, if you're one of those, if you're sitting there and saying, I know I've given up, then you know what? It's time to confess and repent and come before the Father and get that stance back and get that excitement back and get that intentionality back so that we, we search for that treasure, we search for that pearl, we go deeper and deeper and we stand solidly rooted on the word of God because you're called to be a leader. You are called to usher in heaven to earth. That's who God's created you to be. You are created to move mountains. You are created to contend for the things of heaven. Relentlessly contend for them in your life and in the life of those around you. So why do we have to spend time? Why is this so vital? Because as we contend, as we dig deeper, as we, as we look for, as we guard that enthusiasm, that excitement, and that relationship with God, as we stay with him, as we build that staying power, as it matures within us, be, then we dig deeper and deeper and we find more value in the relationship with God, more power in the relationship with God, more freedom in that relationship with God, then we, more healing in that relationship with God than we could ever ask or imagine because that relationship, that time radically changes us. And because it radically changes us, it transforms the way that we think, it transforms the way that we act, but we can't take it for granted. There is an there is an invitation right now to contend for the fullness of the things of God. The question is, are we going to do it? Are we going to go to battle? Are we going to, you know, whether, whether there's times when the battle's in the tent of meeting and there's times when we speak out in front of the assembly, Joshua models both. Okay, are we going to do that? There's times when we stay the course, when it feels like everyone's wandering around, but we don't forget what God has called us to do. So what's our stance going to be? That's our challenge. What's our stance? I want to encourage you to contend for the things of God. You were created to contend for the things of God. The minute you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you joined in that spiritual armor army. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You're filled with all that you need. Guard it, search for it, go deeper, dig deeper, discover it, and step out into it. 
You are a warrior for the kingdom of heaven. We have to contend for the things of God. If we don't, we're going to be roaming through the wilderness for our entire lives because we won't step into the fullness of all God has. You know, just a word of warning. Remember when those spies went in, the 12 came back and they, the people attached to the, to the earthly view of the 10 rather than a heavenly view, that whole generation died off without experiencing the fullness of all God has for them. I am determined to experience the fullness of all God has. I want to be like a Joshua who spends time in the presence of the Lord, who learns how to contend, who leads victoriously, who who has an unwavering mindset from the kingdom of heaven and will walk into the fullness of all God's promised. Why? Because I know who my God is. You know who your God is. So I just want to encourage you. How are you contending for the things of the Lord? And if you need to make some course corrections, there's no time for the present. If you if you need to step out with more authority, with ask the Lord for it. Okay, how do you how do we speak? How do we contend? How do we model the fullness of the kingdom of heaven?